If they're unstable, depending on what's the, if it's in a chemical imbalance or if it's a mental health issue, um, there's different ways to, to combat, you know, the, um, the confrontation. Uh, it's explaining, a lot of it's explaining. Explaining to them, you know, that, you know, this is obviously not the right way to do something. Um, you know, the law is in place, you know, for a reason. Um, and a lot of times they don't, they don't quite understand that because they're, their point of view was more important than anything else. And um, it, it's hard sometimes because you repeat yourself constantly. And at some point you're gonna have to stop and then it's just now we're gonna have to, you know, put our hands on somebody because they're not getting it. Uh, some cops, and this is in general, it's not all, I mean in general, don't take the time to deal with somebody who has you know, a mental health issue or a chemical imbalance, um, they automatically go right to they're on drugs, they're you know drunk, um, they're high. It's you have to take the time to evaluate it on the spot. And sometimes evaluations are you know split second decisions. It's not something that you get time to you know go through a checklist of of stuff. It's something that you have um, through your career to know, you know, what's going on and, you know, who's who. Uh, you know who your regulars are, you know who your dopers are, you know who your alcoholics are, um, you know who your mental health people are. And so, you know, just every time you go to somebody's house, you have a prior history with them, um, nine times out of 10, they're gonna respect you. Um, you know, some people prefer to talk to me versus talking to somebody else. You know, where's Rudy, where's Rudy? I wanna talk to Rudy. You know, I get there and then they're okay. They're not for them, you know, for the other cops. They're total pain in the butts. But when I get there, it's, they're fine. So, you know, it's depending on, on how you handle it. Um, some cops, like I said, just don't take the time and they get their hands on right away and somebody gets hurt. Uh, speaking the Spanish language. It was, uh, um, it's funny, as a, as a kid, uh, um, you know, preteen, you, your folks, well, my folks spoke Spanish. You know, my grandparents spoke Spanish. Uh, my grandparents on both sides didn't speak in English. So my grandfather, the one that won't, the, was a foreman over here, he understood the language, you know, because his boss would tell him what the guys need to do, and then he'd go tell the guys in Spanish what they had to do. Um, but for him to speak it, it was very limited. Uh, my grandmother's and my other grandfather, not a lick of English. So as a child, you know, we had to speak Spanish. And I knew it. And then as I got older, um, you know, my grandparents passed away. Uh, my folks both speak Spanish, but you know, it was um, broken Spanish during, you know, when we were home, it was, bro you know, Spanglish, a little bit of English, a little bit of Spanish. Um, but uh, as I got older, it, I didn't have no use for it anymore um, in my older teens and early 20s. And so it was difficult for me to, to speak uh, Spanish to people who would come to me who would have questions and they were, you know, speaking Spanish. It's like, uh, it, you know, I had to process it. So I kind of lost that and it was a challenge to, to get it back. Um, it's taken quite some time uh, for me to, to get to now where I feel comfortable um, speaking it in um, public or speaking, in, speaking it in a public venue, I guess. Um, whereas before I, I couldn't, you know. So nowadays it's, it's a lot easier and I get a lot of um, our Hispanic community coming in and wanting to speak to me specifically because I'm the only one that can speak Spanish in the department. So they, unfortunately, sometimes they wait um, for me to come back if I'm on my days off or I'm on vacation to report a crime. And sometimes these crimes are, are, uh, are either violent or you know, they're a misdemeanor type where sometimes the time frame is too far away f for me to do anything. And so it's, it's difficult um, uh, for them to, to have to talk to somebody at the police department. So that was the challenge. And it's probably because my, my opinion is a little bit tainted due to the fact that I, I do this job. Um, and I see a lot, a lot of, um, you know, youth that don't have the family support. Um, I think, you know, what the community or what 
the world needs is, is, is parents who are going to support their kids, um, you know, that are always going to be there and not, not be so <coughs> centered on, you know, trying to make an income or centered on their own lives, personal lives, because of certain you know, negative things that have happened, whether it be a divorce, whether it be, you know, separation, whether it be, you know, a death, um, that they, you know, focus back on their kids because they're the ones that are, are going to suffer. Um, and I see that time and time again. It's unfortunate. Uh, I'm thankful that, you know, you know, even though my parents worked when we were young, it's like later on in life, you know, I'm experiencing, um, uh, I'm experiencing more happy times now being with them now whereas before you know we didn't have that opportunity you know and I you know my dad worked a lot and my mom worked a lot so um, and the thing is is I started working a lot you know when my kids were, were little and so you know, I had to take a step back and I think I think the community in a whole and in, in, the, in the world people should really take a moment and step back and, and spend time with their kids I think it's important Eduardo Cardenas. Moises Gomez. Leo Gonzalez.